Our next case is a 33-year-old man who presents to, to your office in December with a four-day history of acute onset of fever and cough. He denies shortness of breath or pleuritic chest pain. He is an otherwise healthy math teacher at a local high school. Influenza H1N1 has been diagnosed in three of his students. On exam, the patient has a fever of 101.5 and a blood pressure of 110 over 78, heart rate at 106 and respiratory rates at 20 breaths per minute. He's alert and oriented. Lung and heart exams are normal. Labs and imaging show a hemoglobin of 15.1, white count of 8.8, .8, platelet count of 30, 328,000, and your chest x-ray is normal. So what should you do now? Are you going to A, perform a nasopharyngeal swab for rapid antigen testing for influenza? B, nasopharyngeal swab for PCR testing for influenza? C, no testing and treat with oseltamivir? Or D, no testing or treatment? You have 12 seconds. And the correct answer for this question is D, no testing or treatment. Um, and much like some of our previous questions, um, likelihood of the test changing your management is key, cost effectiveness. Um, so your pretest probability and all of these things are important and whether you can do your clinical diagnosis. So 62% of you agree with D, 21% chose C, which is another key point in this question, who needs treatment for uh, influenza? So. Seasonal influenza is highly contagious, and you know we talk about tick-borne infections in the summer. We, you know, we think of respiratory viruses like influenza in winter months, where we are mostly indoors, where the air, uh, you know, predisposes to more transmission. The incidence in the season is about three to eleven percent, which is quite a bit. Um, the manifestations are fever, cough, and um, you know, it can progress to pneumonias as well, but in general, you have fever and cough and upper respiratory symptoms. And with regards to testing, the positive predictive value of having respiratory viral symptoms or influenza-like illness during influenza season, and in this particular vignette, with three positive contacts, is pretty high. So that's why testing wasn't recommended for this uh, particular individual. He, it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, so it probably is. And testing isn't necessarily going to give us that much of a benefit or yield. So with regards to testing, the immunoassays, which were widely used um, a few years ago, the sensitivity was about 60%. Now with uh, the wide availability of PCR testing, the sensitivity is over 90%. So testing is available and important um, for certain individuals, but in general, for most patients, testing and treatment for, the matter, for that matter may not be warranted. So who to test with nasopharyngeal swabs? Immunocompromised individuals, immunocompetent individuals that might be at risk for severity, um, complicated by infections as well, if you think that the patient may have a complication of the pneumonia, and in inpatients with acute febrile respiratory disease, not just to diagnose and treat, but to isolate and prevent, progression, prevent transmission to other um, healthcare workers and also uh, vulnerable patients.